All right. Who is your picture of the little baby on your Instagram? It's a. It's my daughter's friend. She grew up with my daughter. That's her name. Oh, we can't hear you. You can't hear me. You can't hear me. Can you hear Reza? Yeah, I can hear. You can hear Reza. You can't hear. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. You can't hear Reza or me. Yeah, I can hear. You can hear Reza. You can't hear. Reza. Oh. Turn your volume down, Reza. On one of your devices. Is that better? Yeah. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Tina. Hey, Tracy. Hey, silly hey, mommy. Everybody. Tracy's on her way home from work. Um, Can you hear me? Desiree Dixon, you was first, boo. Um, DBO, DBO. I don't know how you pronounce that. Miss... Is it Miss Tiana? Hey, Miss Tiana. Thanks for joining us tonight, you guys. I appreciate it. All right, you guys. So tonight we're going to be doing the XTMR segment and Francois vlogs in the middle and Reza ATL. How do you pronounce that? How do you say that, Reza? Fragan the what? <laughs> Reza ATL Fragranista. Fragranista yeah. um, has, is joining us tonight okay um you guys are familiar with francois vlogs and um her other channel love lies and lace front Risa, go ahead and introduce yourself to the chat please i am risa atl fragranista and my channel is about perfume and gossiping in the car in the mornings <laughs> okay because we honey we all can get a little gossip on the way to the job in the morning right that ATL traffic be on a whole nother level. Girl, oh my God. I <laughs> right. told you I used to live in Atlanta and that was the death. That traffic was the death mm. for me. I was it's like, pretty, mm -mm. Bad. pretty bad. Um, all right, you guys. So hey, Miss True. Hey, Miss hey True. Oh hey, no, friend. Uh oh. Where Fran go? Francois? Uh oh. I think she I think she was having problems with her audio. She'll be right back. Okay. <clears throat> All right, you guys. Mama so we Moya? got questions tonight. And, hey Mama Moya. I um, missed you Friday, Mama. All right. Okay. So okay. Francois back with us. Francois, can you hear us okay? Um, yeah, can you guys hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I don't know. All right. My headphones hey, are. Hey, Hey, Leslie Lou. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> All right, you guys. Thank you so much. Hey, Mama Rodriguez. Excuse me, y'all. Hey, Mama Rodriguez. How you doing? Yes, LA, LA traffic is whack. I heard, girl, I heard LA traffic is uh, horrible. The worst. <laughs> but they say Houston traffic ain't no joke either, baby. Mm. All right, so um, I hear some background. Is who device is that? One of y'all got y'all devices. At? I got the volume all the way down on the laptop. Okay. Yeah, I think we're good. All right, all right, you guys. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, if I didn't get a chance to speak, y'all coming in, you know, no disrespect. We just gonna get go ahead and get started with the show. Please make sure you engage with the conversation as well. Um, I do as much as I can to bring your questions up on, the, you know, on the, on the screen so we could see them and address them and, and, and discuss them. All right, ladies, we're getting ready to get started. <clears throat> All right. So y'all, these questions are taken from an app called Ask Herbie and we'll go there to, you know, Talk about celebrity gossip, relationship advice, all type of advice, right? And they just state their thoughts and opinions out there. So we, I have taken some of these um, advice questions, and we're going to try to help these folks out. Now, if you are in the chat, child, if this question sounds like it's your life, baby, don't out yourself if you don't want to be outed, okay? 
Hey, Blama. How you doing? Hey, Royalty. Hey, hey, hey Troy. All right, you guys. Thank you again. Thank y'all so much for joining us tonight. All right, y'all. Let's go. So the first one is coming from a... Um, this first question is coming from, is it Bly Jane or Bly Jane? Okay. Um, so it says, my broke boyfriend frustrates me. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> that will frustrate me too for a ninja to be broke. Okay. So, so my broke boyfriend frustrates me because honestly, I'm used to niggas giving me money and taking care of me because they work because they work, but now my boyfriend, he's sick, so he gets SSI. Oh, okay, y'all, he get a check. He's, he's um, certified. And it says, and some other income that's probably only monthly basis. That's the only time he has money at the first of the month, and he spend it all on bills or mechanical things, because he's a freelance mechanic. Um, but making no money, like I said, he's sick. I stay with him temporarily, rent free, and I don't have to do much. But damn, I still get annoyed giving him money for gas, tools, food, and mechanical things. Like I get annoyed, but I still give it to him anyway like a dummy. But I try not to complain or say anything about it because he does help me when my car breaks down. He gives me some wisdom because he's older than me. I'm in my 20s. He's in his 40s. Oh, okay, girl. Um, <laughs> I don't feel comfortable giving money to a grown-ass man, although... He don't give me any other problems besides the money issue. And he suck at being an, being affectionate. But we working on that. So what do I do? <laughs> um, okay. So here you go. Um, this is Blah Jane. Um, baby, first and foremost, you say you living with him rent fee free but you giving him uh gas money tool money um i don't know whatever the other, the other type of money you said well baby then no actually you're not living rent free because you're giving him money so right. i guess you feel like because your name ain't on the lease you you sky free mm -hmm. but baby you still spend it um now you're in your 20s and he's in his 40s um well sound like gang recognizing the gang Okay. Um, they do say age is nothing but a number. But um, I think you need to mature a little bit because you say you used to niggas with money. So how you get with this one with no money? How'd how that happen? <laughs> um, I think you need to focus on I don't, you know, I don't know if you work or not, but you say when your car break down, he fix your car. You know, at, at the end of the day, baby, is that is are those the only things you require? Is your car being fixed on a? I mean, is your car breaking down every day, every other day? I, you know, I'm I'm confused on that one, baby. I, it just sounds like you might need to work on you instead of work because one thing's for sure, he got a steady income coming in. That's SSI. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, she, she, she. Okay. Somebody says Don Smith says she needs a man her age. Um, she no, Don. I think she needs to age a little more. <laughs> right. She, yeah, she she thinking that uh somebody's supposed to be taking care of her. Like she said, she's staying with him rent free temporarily. But um, like since you staying with him rent free temporarily, baby, do you got a savings account? You say you're not paying any rent. So are you taking some of that money that you would pay rent on and put it in the bank? So when you do decide to jet, you got you a little cushion. Like that's my question. So is she um, buying him mechanical stuff to fix her car? Her car? Yeah. I guess to yeah. fix cars, period. I guess that's what she means. Because she says, you know, it sounds like he's playing her. That's what I'm she saying. She he's, playing, getting, yeah. he's getting he's free. Right, yeah. um, he's got a woman in his bed. He doesn't have to do anything. 
He's paying his regular bills. She's laid up with him. She's given up her money. He's not and doing anything extra. She's given up her tail. <laughs> and he's probably happy. He got a 20 year old up in the bed who can flip it, drop it, pop it, everything. So he was good. Like and he might have some money, but he's not going to give it to her because he's 40 and he knows what the deal is. So if she's over there with low expectations, kind of low, low, you know, she's low budget. He don't have to do anything because she's there and now she's writing letters on the internet. Like, girl, bye. If it was that, if it's that bad, you should have been packed and gone. I agree. Well, yeah. Exactly. And then too, you know, what what happens, like you said, you moved in with him temporarily. So what happens when he puts your tail out? Where She's gonna you go over to the next guy's house. Well, what if the car broke down? He get mad and he don't fix that car. She ain't going nowhere. At the end of the day, she needs to start figuring out a plan for herself. It's talking about what, what ninjas do for her. Girl, what you doing for yourself? Damn. At 20 years old. What you doing for yourself at 20 years old? You need to either be in somebody's college or you need to be having your own house with your uh, name on it. So, Justin, like you said, you you tired of dealing with uh, broke ninjas. Well, you know, when you tired, then you can get up and go to your own apartment. But right. you can't do that. You staying up in there with him, complaining mm -hmm. about what he doing. But at least he giving you a roof. You can't right. even do that for yourself. Right. Somebody in the chat said he sound ungrateful. She sound ungrateful. She sure sound ungrateful. And whatever happens, just happens. You know right. what I'm saying? I thought it was okay. really going to be like a different situation where she was going to be like, you know, but it really sounds like she's the square. Like right. Because you you staying with him, girl. Mm -hmm. You living with him. Even with his little SSI check, he managing to keep a roof over y'all head. Right. Okay. Right. So uh, I'm gonna need you to get it together, um, Bly Jane, baby. Uh, hit us back at the end of 2020 and let us know <laughs> if you have now acquired a lease in your name. Okay, girl, no. All right, girl, 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 Oh my God. Okay, girl. We're going to move on to the next. Somebody else need our help. Okay. All right, y'all. So now we're going to deal with Anonymous. Okay. <laughs> so Anonymous wants to know about an alpha male. Okay. So Anonymous says, okay, so I'm 20. All right. And I was dating this dude <clears throat> that was way older than me. Like he was 36. <laughs> he showed interest in me. And I noticed him off the top. He was very nice. We had a good conversation. And I said something to him about being a submissive woman before she put that in caps. I found out he was an alpha male. So mm -hmm. before we ever started talking, I saw him one night at someone's house and it was very weird. It was a very weird attraction. That night, I had a dream that I was married to a man and he was abusive. And he was chasing me down looking for me. I'm thinking that was a sign of some sort because when we started talking, so now she had the dream. Now her and the dude are in a relationship. He told me I couldn't wear certain things. Or go to an event with my own family because he was like a hype event and telling because it was like a real hype event. And he was telling me if a man speaks to me <clears throat> when he's around and I couldn't speak that I couldn't speak back to him unless he goes unless the man goes through him first. Um, she says he didn't like that I would be punished. Okay, so I guess if he did, if she did something that he didn't like, that she would be punished sexually. He threatened to break my phone because I stepped out to talk to my aunt one day, shaking my head. I got rid of him, but I feel like he's low key watching me. Should I go back to him, sis? What should I do? 
god. Is that the guy from um <laughs> the SSI the guy? What's the uh 50 shades of gray? Mm. That him? Girl. I forgot his name. Uh something gray. <laughs> I just want to know when she first met this man, why did she say anything to him about being a submissive woman? It's like, like, what was that about? Like, why did you have to tell him that? And you're just meeting him. So, so Thank basically you, you was telling him that you like to be controlled because there's a difference of being submissive and being controlled. So mm -hmm. when she said that, like, girl, what you, what is that? And why are you talking to men you just met about being submissive when you're single? Like, why do you care about, care about, you know, being submissive to a man that is not your husband? Like, that's just stupid. Yeah, I agree. Why would you give someone that much authority over you um, to make decisions for you or to lead your household when he, you don't, I mean, like, that's just dumb. That's dumb. Maybe she said it to she try to dumb. Dumb. What, reel him in. What maybe I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Well, how's that? Like, um, you know, I, I, when you tell me to do something, I'm gonna mind you. Like, you know, at the end of the day, why? I mean, again, you could be submissive, but there's a difference between being submissive and someone controlling you. Like, at the end of the day, you still gotta have your own mind. Mm -hmm. She said this man wasn't letting her go. You know, talk to her family. She was trying to talk to her aunt. He threatened to break her phone. He said if they going out somewhere and somebody speak to her, she better not speak back until that person go through him first. Child, I don't, I don't know if they last a day or a year, but honey, we couldn't have I mean, last six hours. Yeah, they okay? sound yeah, they like they're right kind of there, like kind in of a sexual work. kind of uh, domination relationship because some of the things that she's saying sounds like sex games more than it sounds like a real relationship because being like an alpha Charlie. man, there's nothing wrong with being an alpha, you know, an A type or alpha man. There's nothing that, about being an alpha man that says abusive or breaking your phone or being like stupid. Um, it sounds like they are playing some kind of a sex game and she is looking to be dominated. She's looking for maybe a daddy type. Um, She's in her 20s. The man is 36 years old. So he's at least maybe, who knows, 10, potentially 15 years older than her. And maybe she's looking for a daddy. And um, why would you think it's okay for someone to tell you to not go and be around your family? I mean, and why would you even, now that you're not with him, why are you considering going back unless that's something that you actually really like? So... It, she sounds confused. She sounds, well, she like, sounds she like better, but she doesn't want to do better. She's trying to. She wants to go back to daddy. She wants. She wants to be dominated. And you know, okay, well that's fine um, if you want to be dominated, but don't be on this. Ask her. Be asking people for advice, baby. Sound like you already know what you want to do. Ding, ding, you want some reassurance ding, ding. that what you're doing is okay. You know, and at the end of the day, somebody telling you when you can sleep. Uh, uh, when you can talk, when you can uh, walk, uh, when you can, what you can wear, what you shouldn't. Yeah. Uh-uh. No. At the end of the day, honey, he's not your drill sergeant. He was your man. Okay. Right. But y'all know this. There are some women and some men that get down with that type of lifestyle. And mm -hmm. child, I'm not with nobody telling me what to do. Now you can ask me, but I don't need you telling me nothing. Okay? Right. Yeah. I'm just going to keep it 100. Um, okay, well, anonymous, uh, basically, what we're gonna tell you is, um, baby, get your life together, exactly. Okay? Get, your um, life. get your life, get your life together. If you want this man to tell you when to uh speak and not speak, when to uh pee and not pee, <laughs> when to uh eat and not eat. Um, baby, don't be on ask her be complaining about it, okay? All right. Okay, we ain't gonna waste too much more time on her because we're gonna have to we got other folks that need our help, and she sound like she like people telling her what to do, and I ain't getting ready to tell her nothing else. Okay, right, grow up, grow right. up, young lady. We're we not here waste double time. Okay. Ugh. Um, okay, so now we're gonna move on to 
Oh, okay, y'all. This one is interesting. All right, so um, this comes from Tyler Perry Film Flop. Okay, mm -hmm. that's that person's name. It's called What Did I Do? Okay, so she says, uh, so I met this guy on Tinder and he asked to go get coffee the same day we matched and met. So he picks me up. Um, I thought we got along pretty well. Then he says he has to pick up his roommate from work and we ended the day early. We made out before um, we went inside my house, um, and we and then we also made plans to hang out a few days later. Um, but he's being really weird now, like leaving me on open. I guess that has something to do with Tinder. I told him I liked him, and he thought he was and thought he was a nice guy, but I was so wrong, so wrong. She says. We ended up hanging out last night. He picks me up at 11 p.m. from my house, and we go back to his house. He tells me to be quiet because he doesn't want to wake his roommate. Red flag, she says. Then we end up having sex. It was pretty good. Okay, that's great. Um, we didn't end up using a condom. Oops. Oh, Jesus. Then he starts telling me how he should have she how we should hang out during the daytime for longer for longer and should go here and there. And he is OK. She said and we're, we're having this conversation while he's driving me back home. So she didn't even get a chance to spend the night. Um. He even asked when the next time I didn't have to work so we could hang out. So now I'm back inside my house. It's about an hour after he's dropped me off. I look down at my phone and see he has blocked me and unmatched me on Tinder. What did I do wrong to him? Signed, Tyler Perry, Flim Flop. You gave him what he wanted to for him. I mean, um, it's not even sis, too soon. he probably just didn't. He just probably wanted some booty. That's it. He wouldn't. He just wanted to get some anonymous sex. Not anonymous. <laughs> some unknown booty cat. Some unstrained. <laughs> she wanted the strange punani. Okay, <laughs> that's what he wanted, and he she wanted it. to do some and strange she gave up for her. a little piece of get a hamburger. <laughs> she, she didn't, didn't get even nothing. Get no he girl, he took. I'm surprised to he didn't call her an Uber, but at least he, that probably would have been on his credit card. So he's not completely stupid. But I bet you his wife, somebody was up in the house. That that was foul. Girl, when he told her to be quiet, I was like, what, you stay with your grandma? What's your woman, your grandmother? His wife had just taken two allergy pills, so oh, she was up there to sleep. Friend, hilarious. Oh, <laughs> so, but, but you wanted that strange. She, she, made, she made it a point to let us know that they didn't use a condom. And, you know, where he you know, messed up at that. is that she actually yeah, may know where he lives. She might have marked the location. So when he gets them papers in the mail and he's on, he's being invited to Maury or downtown to the courthouse, that's going to be his own fault. And that's even if that was his house. He could have been at his homeboy's house. We don't mm. even know whose house that was. Mm. That could have been where the, you know, where the, like, you know, I mean, I don't know, somebody's apartment. Who knows? I just want to know. She said they met on Tinder the same day. Mm -hmm. she said they went out that same day to to for coffee. Yeah. As he was, he he told her after they talked for a few moments. He said, "Uh, you know, let me let me drop you off because I got to go pick my roommate up." He's really. Um, very uh, available to this roommate, okay? Um, and so, you know, they made out 
I'm just trying to figure out, like, you literally knew the man, I don't know, less than 24 hours. Why was you slobbing this man down and you right. didn't even know him 24 hours? Like, you gave him an impression that you shouldn't have gave him. Because once you did that, baby, you let him know that you was down for any and everything. But that might be how she operates. I mean, Tasha, there's, I mean, look, the, that's just, that's how some people operate. Okay. There are people out here who do not mind giving up the boots on the first day. <laughs> the boots. You know, okay. I mean, yeah. and that's, you know what? they don't mind. They don't. But you can give up the boots. Just protect your, the. I mean, protect the bottom of your boots. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, and that's, I agree. That's like next level. I mean, you know, like uh, that's next level. I mean, there's you can't be uh, that, like, uh, it ain't stuff out there still today that you can't spell or pronounce. Like AIDS never went anywhere. anywhere. HIV is still out there in roaming. Like herpes. Yeah, and what didn't Usher's little records just get um, released? Mm -hmm. it, Positive, yeah, syphilis, gonorrhea, yeah, I mean, all that. Mm. Strain attachment. He had sex with her without a condom. Who's to say he didn't do it before? Or he was too comfortable doing it with her. Yeah. Oh boy. I mean, look, it could have been one of those. Okay, let's meet for coffee. Let me make sure that she doesn't have three, you know, an eyeball in the center of her forehead. Let me check out her butt. Let me make sure. She's a woman, you know, because everybody's into different things. And these days, I'm sure for men, probably even more so, they need to kind of, you know, I mean, you don't want to have an encounter and it's not what you're looking for. So he probably wanted to just make sure it is, you know, she was down. And when he came to pick her up at 11 o'clock. Yeah, I mean, what she thought was getting ready to happen. Yeah. Tasha, what is, what, what, who told you something that's what's what's open at eleven o'clock? Girl, White Castle, White Castle and legs. legs. <laughs> <laughs> that's what my mom said. <laughs> the only thing open in the middle of the night is White Castles and legs. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so he come and pick you up at eleven o'clock. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. When I was young and, and I was dating like that and, and Boo called me and he was like, what you doing? And it's like 10.30. Mm -hmm. I'm like, laying down. You want to go yeah. out? Yeah. No, because I'm tired. No, because what we getting ready to do? And I'm tired. Now, and I was in my 20s when that was going on, right? So, I mean, I get it. I, You know, look. Baby, you got to start. Like, women, we have to start having expectations for ourselves you you just can't like you know you can't just think okay well i'm just you know i'm gonna just lay up with him for a minute and then be surprised that literally not even two hours after y'all done laid up he didn't uh block you on tinder because he didn't got the tinder he, you know you you said it was good he might not have thought it was as good you know mm -hmm. you didn't even you didn't even allow yourself to let this man to really get to know you or you to get to know him or to really see if you do have like you might have had a physical attraction to him you know that's easy to have but you know i, I want to have an intellectual attraction to you as well you know what i'm saying because after we finish uh hooking up now what we getting ready to do what, what we gonna talk about can we talk do you know how to talk child do you know how to spell you know right. what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm what's just, his name really, Larry? Name really Larry? Okay, girl, you don't even. Did you see any pieces of mail laying on the coffee table, right. child? Did you see anything? No, you didn't see nothing. You didn't it's, see anything. It's unfortunate. Um, there's just a lot of women out here uh, who are all too ready to just give it up, and I think that unfortunately, a lot of people feel like sex is like my, you know, a right. And you should enjoy it and do what you want, but uh, you know it, it comes with a price. It comes of a pri it comes with a price of potential humiliation. Um, it comes, you know, it just you know people don't know how to handle themselves, unfortunately. And then they get them, and now she's writing a letter. I mean, because obviously you cared, or else you wouldn't be writing a letter. Um, but you got yeah, to like 
like you out here throwing it around and you don't care. Because if you're throwing it around and you do care, stop throwing it around. Mm-hmm. You know, well, hold you on know, to uh, it like it's actually something valuable. Keeping up with, uh, keeping up with you. Uh, keeping up with you said she should have brought a day after pill so she won't get pregnant. That was straight nasty. Well, baby, what I now I didn't heard here lately that them day after pills ain't working. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I heard they that. take they action don't work up. either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they 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 not working for everybody. Okay, yeah. I'll say that for everybody they ain't work for everybody. Okay, so I don't know. Um, nice. you know what? I'm, I'm gonna just I'm gonna keep it one hundred. I mean, if you know. Sometimes you just want to lay up. You don't necessarily want to uh, marry somebody. You just want to have a good time. And that's fine. You can do that. But baby, at least protect yourself. Because then when you do go find Mr. Right, you don't want to be messed up on the inside. And you can't even give yourself to this man because you got some terminal disease. You know what I'm saying? That's right. all I'm saying. I'm not saying that you should never, you know, have sex with somebody casually. I mean, if, baby, that's, if that's what you're going to do. That's what you're going to do. Okay? Because right. we all grown here. Okay? But all I'm saying is protect yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, girl, wear a condom. Make him wear a condom. And if he's the type of nigga that don't want to wear one, baby, that's not the type you need to be with. Right. Period. God. Because I'm worried about his health. What about when you walk up into like the company Christmas party or your homegirl's cookout on 4th of July and here he is and you're that girl that he met on Tinder, took out for a $3 cup of coffee and picked up at 11 o'clock for, you know, some bump and grind and never, you know, I mean, like, come on, yeah, protect yourself, protect your reputation, like, think a little bit more of yourself than that. You know what I'm saying? Like, meeting anonymous men on the internet, yeah, okay, maybe you do just want to lay up, but you know what? Eventually, it's gonna come back to haunt you. And I don't care if you live in New York City, you will bump into people again, especially if you're traveling in the same circles. You could run into this person and the story is is that you're the girl he picked up off the internet and screwed the same night and basically, you know, ghosted her. And that was Um, was it. Miss Tracy said said, a couple hours of pleasure is not worth a lifetime of pain. Right. Most definitely. Yeah. And what if you know he said absolutely a baby should not be a product of that night. Mm -mm. Exactly. Especially even have a rapport with this man, child. He didn't unfollowed you on Tinder, right? Now, how do you be able to tell him that you uh, just conceived? He probably ain't gonna even believe you. I mean, to be quite honest, would you like if if you come to this man a month later and say, oh, "I'm pregnant," he gonna be like, "By who?" <laughs> exactly. And he gonna, you gonna be like, "By you, uh, uh-uh, uh, girl." Because if you gave it, to, if you gave me the guts in 24, 48 hours, child, who else you giving it to? Right. right. See now you now you setting yourself up for stuff like that. Now you somewhere crying and feeling like you want to uh, jump off the Brooklyn Bridge because this ninja is ne- neglecting the fact that he could be potentially the daddy. But that's the problem, baby. Potentially, that means there's other potentials, right? You know what I'm saying? So, that's what I was saying. Like protecting your vagina, you protect your name. Protect your integrity. Protect your heart. Protect your integrity. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Protect, protect yourself is not just protecting your vagina. Okay? And if you want a man to treat you like a woman, baby, you got to act like one first. Mm-hmm. It's sad that a lot yeah. of young women out here don't care about, you know, their worth. Like, you just worth so much more than that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah. So you don't know you yourself to protect yourself like it's just crazy exactly honey you got to understand if a man's not willing to compromise then you that's not the one you need to deal with but just move on to the next one he ain't he he won't be the first nor will he be the last to approach you okay Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. that's scary though just Mm -hmm. out here randomly having sex with people and then you ain't using no protection now if you get to the point you know, you start talking to him, you feeling him, whatever. You know, a month down the line, and y'all, that physical attraction is really starting to burn. And you know, child is ne- never inconvenient. 
to you and him both to go get checked. Yeah, mm. get, let, let that be your day. Let's go to the Board of Health and we both get checked. So therefore, again, you and him both can have sex very freely, openly, with no with no re regrets. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I know that doesn't work like that all the time, y'all. That you know everybody is not doing that, and I get that, you know. But I just think these young, the, uh, these millennials nowadays, that you know, they just everybody's just a free spirit when it comes to sex, you know. And then you sitting up here crying when you got that package, and you don't know how to uh, deal with the fact that you got that package, you know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Okay, y'all, we just spent enough time on uh, Lucy Goosey. Oh, it's uh, <laughs> what it is. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, baby, I can only call it how I see it. Uh, we didn't spend enough time on her. We got another sis that needs our help. Okay, this is coming from Renee 38109. Okay, Renee, if you in the chat, maybe don't even say nothing. Okay, <laughs> all right, so Mary, but still lonely. Aww. I've been married for 16 years, and for the past two to three years, I have been feeling alone. Aww. We have three beautiful children together in this world. The children come first, mm -hmm. then hanging out with friends, and then our marriage. We never go out alone together, no trips, nothing. Anytime we do go out, the children are with us. I always ask him, let's just do something special. You know, just you and I. He says, we can't because we have no time and no money. Wow. Any advice is very well appreciated. Y'all sis needs our help. She need our help, y'all. We have to be careful with that one because it's a whole married couple. Well, yeah, married, not married, you know, relationship, relationship. You know what I'm saying? Um, most definitely 16 years in the good. And in the last two, three years, things is going sour. Um, he's, you know, saying he using the excuse that they don't have no money or no time. But she say they, you know, they take the kids out. So, I mean, you know, oh, yeah. at Denny's, you can get uh, the breakfast slam for what? Is it four ninety nine, five ninety nine? That $10. Um, um, I mean, there's I other would advise, to do. I would advise her to have a talk with him. I mean, if you mm -hmm. can't talk to him, your own husband, I mean. For 16 years, not right. six months. Right. 16 years. So you. And it's a fact, you know, know, married people fall in and out of love all the time. So it, you know, it happens. But if it's a point to where you're lonely, you need to go talk to him. Yeah, not on ex Herbie. Now I do understand. Yes, you know, sometimes we can't talk to our friends, right? Some sometimes mm -hmm. that happens. Have some situation where we can't really, you know, talk to our friends about situations because they're going to judge you. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there's obviously probably some deeper things going on that she probably couldn't type it all out or didn't want to put it all out there, or it could be some things that's going on that she knows and she's just ignoring. You know, true. Um, but. To be living in a relationship, a marriage especially, and feeling alone, that, you know, there's obviously some deeper rooted things going yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, hey, hey, TK Star. I mean, you know, uh, hey, just Nikki. Hey, Kels. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Hey, Nikki, but my name ain't Nicole. I'm sorry. I just seeing y'all come into the chat. So, you know, y'all, I, I don't know what we're going to do with our sis. How can how can we help our sis? Anybody in the chat, do y'all know how we can help our sis? Go talk to your husband. I mean, I'm just wondering, does she have a job? Did she say she had a job? I missed that. Um, she did not say if she had a job. Um, she, and she, yeah, she don't say. The reason why I'm asking, number one... You can't look in a marriage. It's important that even though you are a married person, that you still keep some of, you know, you need to keep your identity. Um, you can't make someone your complete air that you breathe. Um, because not only can that be stressful for you when they are not a hundred percent, it can be stressful for them 
because you're the one who's feeding, you know, literally everybody. Um, having a job outside the home, even if it's a part-time job, not only will give you some feeling of independence, some pride, um, you will make some money, you will maybe meet a couple of cohorts at work. So you're going to maybe make a few friends, even if they're just work friends, there's some people to kind of interact with to not put so much pressure on your husband. Also, this money that you're making, and guess what? You can use that for dates. You can use that to do some things for yourself. Um, it may give you some additional things to talk about. So it's quite possible if she doesn't have a job, maybe get a job, maybe get a part-time job, even volunteer. So if it's not a paid job, you know, get some things to do. But I would certainly recommend if money is an issue and you're not making any money, try to make some money, whether it's babysitting, whether it's, you know, doing something to at least bring in maybe a hundred, two hundred dollars um, a week. And, you know, get yourself out the house. If the man can't afford to take you on dates, but it's, you know, they want to do stuff as a family, that's more important than in his eyes than to do stuff as a couple. I mean, I'm not going to fault the man. I mean, it's his family. He has to make decisions of what he thinks is best and she needs to voice her concerns. But mm -hmm. if he's up for going out and it's just that you don't have the extra money on top of taking the kids out, get a job, lady. Get a job. Dip in, you know, help contribute to that. And have some well, independence some. for herself. Right. Exactly. Exactly. She and you guys, she, she also said something. I think y'all missed this. She says that um the children come first, then hanging out with friends, and then our marriage. So I believe she's saying in his eyes, it's the kids, his homeboys, and then their marriage. Okay. So that's what she's saying. So he's putting hanging out with his friends in front of them hanging out. Because obviously, if you're hanging out with the homeboys, I mean, you got even if y'all going to play pool, you got to have money to do that. But she's saying, you know, he 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 manages to spend time with the children. He manages to spend time with his homeboys. But then her time comes very last. And then mm -hmm. when it gets to her time, there's no money, so they can't go anywhere. So they just sitting up in the house, probably in different parts of the house. He probably in the living room. She probably in the bedroom or he in the family room and she where, you know, they're not sitting together, maybe watch a TV conversating. You know, my husband and I, when we, when our kids were young and we didn't really have the money or nobody to watch the kids, y'all, we used to stay in the house and play cards with each other. Right. You know, but we I mean, Saturday nights, but at 11 o'clock y'all are in the bed. You know what I'm saying? So at a certain point, you two are together. So if that intimate conversation time is from 11 to 11, 15, when you guys both get into the bed, um, it, to me, it sounds like she needs to get a little bit of her own life because he's living yeah. his life. He's living, he may not be living his best life, but he, he's living somewhat of his best life. He's yeah. working. He's taking care of his kids. He got the wife at home. He got his home boys. She is sitting there um, so it's all him. And then she says, the kids come first. Lady, go get yourself a little job. Get your nails done. Once you start getting some business, I guarantee you he's going to be trying to figure out what you got going on. Mm -hmm. Get you some business. And I guarantee you, if he goes out with his homeboy every Friday night, it might be every other Friday night. Make him want to... I would rather make him want to spend more time with me out of like, okay, rather than like, we don't spend any time together. Can we do this? Can yeah. we do that? I mean, he should be like, oh, okay, you're going out with Janice and Claudia and, and Tasha Marie and, and Riva. Okay. Um, what time yeah. are you coming home? Right. And then he's sitting there waiting on you to get to the house. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I know, that's right. Go on and give her a plan, Francois. Get that girl a plan. <laughs> get up. Get up. Yeah. I know that's right. Figure it out that he needs to get home and pick his wife up and take her out on a date. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. um, so for time um, talks with Kale says a lot of people are alone in their marriages. And um, yeah. yeah. People are, are, do, are feeling alone in their marriages. And you know what? 
I, you know, it's 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 unfortunate. I mean, thank God for a website like Ask Herbie for people who don't have anybody to talk to. They could possibly come to a, a website like this and say, hey, I have this problem. But the only unfortunate thing about this is you need several sides of a story. There's mm -hmm. always three sides to a story. There's your side, his side, and then it's the truth. True. Yeah. You know? So unfortunately, we're only getting her side, not saying what she, her feelings are, what she's saying. These are not, uh, you know, adequate feelings that she's having. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that, but baby, there's there's another side. Okay? Right. That's why you need to go to this marriage counselor or your pastor and explain to the pastor, especially if he's willing to go. Now, if he's not willing to go, then baby, you, you might want to start figuring out why he don't want to help the marriage. Right. Because he may not see a problem. He may not be even be having a problem. It may be her. Like, you know how they say, if me and you have a problem and only I know about it, then you, then I have the problem. Yeah, so I agree with R.E. He may yeah, be I, I agree. He is not really, and I'm not trying to just blame the woman. This is just one angle to take it. But at the end of the day, if he's happy and she's not happy as a woman and in a marriage, you have to work on yourself first. You cannot rely on some now. Now he takes you out on a date. What next? What's he need to yeah. do? A tap dance for you? I mean, you got to make your own self happy. You have to be able to fulfill those needs um, outside of you know your husband, and that may be having a couple of girlfriends, picking up a hobby, you know, doing some things for yourself. Mm -hmm. Exactly, um, Re. Re said, after 16 years, you're not making nobody do what they don't want to, period. At all. We talking about a I man. Heard I heard that, Re. Uh, Sofa Time Talk said, tell it, friend. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you guys have not uh, watched Kales's channel, Sofa Time Talks with Kales, Kels, put a thumbs up in the chat so people can see y'all. Y'all need to go hit your girl up because, honey, she be over there spitting straight facts. Yeah. But um, so time talks with Kels says, tell it, friend. He probably don't even think there's a problem, girl. You're on a roll right. tonight. I know that's right. <laughs> I agree. I agree. She's probably putting yeah, more into yeah. it than he is. Yeah. I know that's right. So, you know, you, you know, it's, it's unfortunate. I mean, you guys, she just gave us a very small paragraph of probably of a whole chapter of information we needed to know. And Francois, I think you said it so appropriately when you said it sounds like she doesn't have a life. And because right. she doesn't have anything going on, she's worried about what, you know, I'm not saying that she's not worried about her marriage, but baby, if you had something additional going on, then you probably wouldn't be worried about that two, three hours that y'all not spending together. Because I feel like if this man is still coming home every night, baby, you batting a thousand. Because you got a lot of women yeah. out there that can't to come home. Right. You what about when he doesn't come home? That's going to be the problem. Exactly. Now, y'all not going to uh, Chili's or TGIF Fridays, baby, that's that's water to a duck, okay? Mm -hmm. That's nothing, you know. But when that man ain't coming home, oh baby, you got a problem. Yeah, you got a problem. <laughs> got a big problem. Yeah, Houston, we got a problem. <laughs> and she didn't mention that in her comment, right? Like in her question. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. um, and it sounds like he's a family man. He's they right. doing stuff with the kids. I mean, that's important. I mean, we have an eight-year-old, and a lot. I mean. Nine times out of ten, when we're going out, it's with our kid. Yeah. I mean, we have a date night less than we have a family night. I mean, that's just the way it is when you have small children. Um, but there's nothing wrong with that. You got to, I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, she's been with him for 16 years. I mean, I would imagine they still have relatively small, not small, but maybe high school to whatever age. And um that's what it is. I mean, you're a family. You want to go out on date night? You know, you got to make date night happen. Put the kids to the put like, the kids to sleep. Put something cute on. Get something good to drink. And you guys have date night after the kids go to bed. Shut your bedroom door and get it popping. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on now. It's not all about being out. You know, order some Uber Eats. 
shut that door and make it do what it do in the bedroom. Just, you know, you have a romantic <laughs> in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. uh, Don Smith said, I used to dress like I was going to the club and went and walked around Walmart. She said, after a few weeks of that, his homeboys weren't important anymore. I know that's right. You okay, gave me those who don't matter. <laughs> exactly. And see, that's probably what it is, y'all. She don't have any interest. So he, he's taking it for granted. Uh, she's yeah. sitting on the couch. I go hang out with my boy. She'll still be sitting on the couch. Girl, but what you need to do, sis, you need to do what Don said. Child, go put you some clothes on. If you don't do nothing but go to the Walmart, walk around there for a couple hours. And baby... Come in the house after he's been there for about thirty minutes, so he can say, "Right, where, where are you coming from? Where are you right, right, right." Out. Have you been <laughs> okay. daiquiri? Is that daiquiri on your breath? <laughs> <laughs> All right, friend. <laughs> Is that <laughs> Long Island iced tea on your right. breath? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um. So for time, talk to Kel says, "Man, after sixteen years, I would think I." I've invested this much time. I wouldn't trip that much off of not having date night. No, Kels, I, I disagree, baby. You got to keep that spot, um, the spontaneous in a relationship. Date night, yeah, that's 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 you and him. You know, you still need that. Even twenty five years later, you you still you yeah. still need that. Now, I'm not saying you got to have it every weekend, but at least once a month. You know, just mm -hmm. something that you and him can. Go out and enjoy each other without the kids saying, he took my this and blah, blah, blah. And blah, blah. Or, you know, just get away from the bills and the, and the monotony of, you know, taking care of a household. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need that. You need that time away from the house and the mm -hmm. stress. Okay. All right, y'all. So we, we didn't talk to about our sis. Um, you know, she gave us a paragraph and we gave her about 20 minutes. Okay. All right, sis. I hope you work it out. Uh, go on and get over there to the uh, uh, your pastor or uh, marriage counselor, whomever, whatever, and uh, let us know. Like, so you're lonely, huh? Huh? What pastor brand? might be like, so you lonely, huh? <laughs> lonely. Oh, come on over. Let me give you a hug. <laughs> right. Then you got to be running yes. away from the pastor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, you know, just maybe get back with us in about six months and let us know uh, what to do, boo. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. We're going to go on to our next one. This is from an Advice Seeker Girl. Okay. All right. So we on to a new sis, y'all. All right. So it says, my boyfriend cheated in my face. Okay. Uh, I went to my boyfriend's oh. house today to visit. He said he had an old friend over. Um, I had earlier. Wait a minute, she said I had an earlier than what he expected. Oh, I had arrived earlier than what he had expected, and when I got there, him and the friend were both in the bed. He came out fully naked and got dressed. He then also tries to introduce me to his friend. The friend came out. The friend came out of the bedroom, um, by the way, half naked too. Okay. And put on her clothes. I was like, what the hell is going on? They both acting like it's normal. And then said he had to walk her out his place. They both walked out and left me sitting there looking stupid, um, wondering if I'm crazy or not. I'm Now I'm trying to figure out, should I F up his home or just leave? Just leave. What you going to mess up somebody else's home for? He was, what? Well, you know, um, sis. That's just, um, just clue number one. You don't need to be with him. I, yeah, F up his house for what? The damage is already done, but he not already slept. What you effing up the house for? All right. It's law, oh. Um, and I'm going to be honest with you. If this is the behavior that you caught, ain't no telling what you ain't caught. <laughs> Tell <laughs> says he would have been fighting his friend. <laughs> Uh, what, what we gonna fight the friend for? The friend ain't is not day 
dating her, he dating her. So no, I'm gonna be fighting him, not her. Mm -hmm. She just look, she just did what she was asked. He asked her to come over, and that's what she did. Okay, she ain't do nothing wrong. Right, Dominic. He, he didn't have no respect for her. No respect. Exactly. See, that's the problem, y'all. Whenever them situations happens, we always want to go to the woman and scratch her eyeballs out. She she didn't say, uh, can I date you? No, and your friend is so right. scratching. And then a lot of women say, Well, it's it's a uh the uh, uh code of ethic, the woman code of ethic. Well, baby, how how can it be? What, know what you. if she didn't know about her? Right. She probably didn't even know that you existed. He said, Hey, come over so I can get into them guts. And that's what she did. Thanks. Guts gone. <laughs> so uh to be quite honest with you, um, I think she should just um she should leave, she should go how she came. Um, Ooh. baby, if you came in a car, leave in a car. If you, you came there with no handcuffs, leave with no handcuffs. Because right. if you go over there tearing up that man's house, he called in the police on you, okay? Mm -hmm. And now you got a bigger problem. So I would advise you to uh, go on and leave and delete his number out your phone and find you somebody that will respect the fact that he know you coming over and he would make sure there ain't no woman there once you get there, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would be like, praise God, in the name of Jesus, I saw this after day one, and yeah. I never have to yeah. go back there again because I would no hate time wasted. To find out. Yeah, no time wasted. Just a good story that I can laugh and kiki about with my friends. Mm -hmm. What concerns me is that she sat down once again and wrote a letter. Why are you even having heartburn about this? This is a clear case of stop. Don't even waste your time. Run. Right. Yeah. You talking about you sitting there. I'm trying to figure out what was she still waiting there for. And then you calmly watched him put his clothes on. Did you calmly watch her put her clothes on? Like, girl. Mm -hmm. If you was going to They were probably the house, hoping she that she was going to jump in for a threesome, honestly. Oh, it ain't no fun. I mean, if you don't care don't like care. that. If the woman didn't really see two phase, <laughs> that was a jam. Am I, am I wrong? Did she? She did. The other woman didn't really seem phased, right? Girls, that she said that woman came out, put her, she said she was half naked. She went, came out the room with her clothes in her hand and put them on and walked on past the woman. Like, hey, boo, you next. Oh, hey, hey. I'm about to I would have said, no, I'm not. <laughs> hey. Uh, or I'll go down to the kitchen, make some eggs or something. I mean, these people are living. Well, I stay really upstairs and scramble some eggs with a friend. Yeah. Oh, Girl, I yeah, didn't know. Like, are living God. Out. Honey, she should like, when you talking about, I wonder if she was typing this while she was sitting on the couch waiting for him to come back and walk his boot down <laughs> outside and gave her a kiss on. John pat her on the booty and pushed her on in the car. You're then not he even your man. Him. Who cares? Let him I'll go. She leave. Yeah. Girl, talking about what should I do? Should I f up his house or should I just leave? Girl, you ain't left yet. You still there? <laughs> right, right. You need Girl, you still there? You need an <laughs> approval to go? <laughs> right. That's what? Like Girl, you still there? Tasha, Maybe. remember that that letter, um, that girl in New Jersey who was um, who was supposed to go over to the guy's house. He fell asleep and she set the house on fire. Oh, what? Lord. remember that that story that you yeah. did? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, you know, she, she's like this dumb girl. Like, let it go. Yeah, let it go. yeah. She Ubered over there, honey. She Ubered yeah. over there. He told her to come on through. And she Ubered over there. And when she got over there, she was banging and knocking on the door. He wasn't answering the door. He had fell asleep. She thought he had somebody up in there. Girl, she walked up to the gas station up the street, went and got some gasoline, set the whole man house on fire. LaWanda said, or do the Al Green on him with hot grits. <laughs> but it's not worth a felony. Why do you like, want to go sit ball, up in, like, in uh, orange from head to toe? Yeah, uh -huh. is, I and mean, that's another thing. Y'all, this was her boyfriend. This ain't her husband. This right. is her boyfriend. I'll be like, oh, okay, you you busy? All right, bye. You know what I'm saying? I would have left. I'll F up his house. Mm -hmm. what? Mm -hmm. what? What are we going to do that 
time for it. Child is mm-hmm. taking too much time. That's time that she could be spending finding somebody else while she in that okay. tan of his house. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, girl, bye. I've been like, child, next Carla. Right. right. I'd have been out of there. I'd have been out yeah. of there. Uh-oh. Me too. Mm-hmm. With the quickness. Right. Girl. So I, I'd have been getting a call on my cell phone like, where are you? Do, what happened? Where'd you go? Are you coming back? I'd be like, man, this is going to be the last time you're going to speak to me, so don't call me anymore. That's it. We're done. I'm back. I am I would have told him, boy, I am in the car. I, matter of fact, I'm at the house. Right. Mm-hmm. We're done. I wouldn't have answered. I would have blocked him so fast. Mm-hmm. Okay. So... Right, Patricia. Mine either. All right, you guys. So I have another one. I actually did this one um, the other day in my video, but I want to get you guys' opinion on this one. <clears throat> so this one is, um, I need advice. It's from a person by the name of No Sis. It says, not sure of my sexuality. I've been questioning my sexuality for a while now. It seems like I only like guys, like I'm crushing on them. But the thought of them naked kind of grosses me out. But um, I find women attractive. I've heard it's normal for a woman to appreciate another woman, even if they are straight. But like, it's weird. But I won't F a woman with a strap on. And I don't know if that's just a kink or something to do with my sexuality. I am a virgin, and I don't plan on losing it soon, since I'm only 17. So I haven't experimented, and I don't know who to experiment with, kissing-wise, either. I don't bother with labels, but if anyone asks, I say I'm straight, but I'm not sure if I am. Oh, do y'all see Sarah? (laughs) Oh, because you. Yeah, so uh, this young lady is 17 years old, okay? She's 17. Um, she doesn't know if she's attracted to men or women. Um, she Well, she's attracted to both, okay? But she says the thought of a man grosses her out. And then when she thinks about a woman, she's like, yeah, um, yeah, but I don't think I could have sex with them with a strap on. Yet... She is a virgin, okay? She's also thinking about experimenting with kissing a, a, a man or a woman. She hasn't done either, either one yet. Um, and she says she doesn't bother with labels. And she's not really sure. She said when someone asks what her sexuality is, she says, I'm straight. What? Although she, so it sounds like she's bi-curious, Okay. So it sounds like she's by curious. And it also sounds like that she's 17. Well, she is 17. And it sounds like that she needs to be on, um, not ask Herbie, she needs to be asking her mom. Mom, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt like it was a weird letter just because of the strap-on comment. I'm like, we, like, I'm like, really? You don't know. You're very, sound like you're very naive to sex. How do you know about all of that? Like, that was kind of weird. So it made me feel like I got like gross, dirty old man vibes trying to write like a sexy letter to see what would come of it. Um, that was weird. Um, but someone said in the comments, I'm not sure who it was again, but someone said, 17, let education be your focus. Like, if you're not sure what you want to do, get your grades, graduate, and, like... You have plenty of time to think about that. This other person who's in the chat talking about that they're a virgin at 23, like, uh, clearly you're not ready. So, like, get off, you know, get, like, if, if if sex is a highway, like, get back on the feeder road or get back on the main, the local roads. Like, you don't, this isn't for you yet. You know, yeah. if you're not, if you're disgusted by men's bodies, you know, um, nature has a way of activating things when it needs to be activated. You'll know in due time. Don't force it. I agree with Fran. I mean, yeah. yeah, I yeah, you're right, Fran. I mean, I 
I personally feel like the reason why she knew about the strap on is because the internet. Okay. Yeah, she's she's Googling, um, you know, by curious questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. And she's getting this type of information, you know, but it, the unfortunate thing is there's a lot of young people that are struggling with that right now. They're struggling with their sexuality. Like that's a real thing, you know? And it's unfortunate that this woman is on this website asking for advice and she's not comfortable enough with going to her family member, like her mom or her dad or big sister or even a school counselor. So right. my, my, I would hope everybody in this chat is over the age of uh, uh, 21, okay? Or at least 18. But I, my advice would be, if you are a person that's dealing with your sexuality and you're not really sure, um, you know, seek professional help. It's to, to I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I've, I've never had a problem with my sexuality, so I guess it's kind of hard for me to, I mean, you love what you love, okay? Mm -hmm. If you're a woman and you're attracted to a woman, then that's just what it is. If you're a man and you're attracted to a man, that's just what it is, you know. Um, yeah, society I agree. Says this, society says that, but that's just what it is. I agree with what you're saying, Tasha. But it sounds more like this person just wants to experiment rather than they're talking about. I met a girl named Jennifer, or I met a boy named Brian. It just sounds like they are looking for an experience, not a relationship, or they're not coming to it in a place of like. I'm sweet on somebody that I'm interested in. There, set my, uh-uh, excuse me. <laughs> okay, turn around, okay. Mom, wife. Yeah, Farrah, Farrah, stop, okay. Oh my God. Girl, we got a case of Phillies going on right now. Um, okay, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it sounds like she's looking for an experience and all I'm saying is, you know, 17, be careful about activating. You know, once you start having sex, that's you want to start having sex, right? Yeah. I mean, be careful because once you get started, you're not going to want to stop. I mean, let's just be real. Um, it does something to your body, it feels good. And if you're not really sure what you want to be doing, you could say she is gay and she starts having sex with men. She could end up having a bad experience because maybe it's not what she needs or wants, vice versa. I mean, just like stop trying to force it. That's my thing. Like let nature, if you're curious in your head, just let it take its course. Meet someone, a friend, you you find out that you like that person and you want to experiment with that person, whoever that person might be, great. But don't just, you. for someone who says that they're not into labels, it sounds an awful lot like she wants to be suggested to a label. And you know what? What's wrong with labels? When we go into the grocery store, labels help you take home kidney beans instead of pickles. Um, you know, whole milk versus... Uh, 2%. I mean, there's nothing wrong with a label. You know, labels help us figure things out. So, oh, I agree with that. Oh, humble chick, that's uh, sex is more than physical. It's it is a transfer of energy. She needs to be careful. I like the way you phrased that, yeah. humble chick. That was really deep. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. That is so true. Yeah. I, you mm -hmm. know, my, my question though, or my statement is, I truly feel like this young lady needs to find out who she is before she even starts um, thinking about sex. Like, obviously, you don't even know who you are. You know, she I think she needs to find spend more time of just getting to know who she is. And I believe once she finds out who she is, then she will then be able to, you know, distinguish what she's sex, um, what she's attracted to sexually. Yeah. You know, but again, you're 17. You haven't even began to live life. Right. And I just really feel like that's an awful thing. Like liking somebody is, is natural. OK, mm -hmm. that, that's natural. Uh, You know, two cats like each other, the male and the female cat. You know what I'm saying? So that's 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 just the natural uh, uh, thing to happen. But mm -hmm. I just think it, it needs to be. um, You know, like Humble Chick said, it's a transfer of energy. And I just feel like if you're not 
able to distinguish that or explain even what that means, I don't think you should be venturing off into that into that world you know until yeah. you really are ready and that's the unfortunate thing we have a lot of young people having sex way too early and they're they're not ready you right. know you have to be ready it's a very emotional um event you know or act i, I could say it's a very emotional act and if you're yeah. not mentally physically and emotionally ready for it like it can it could potentially destroy you you know mm -hmm. because you're dealing with feelings that you don't know how to deal with mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um <clears throat> so I'm we're, advice. we're we're emotional so, anyway especially for women exactly we're very emotional we so are. i think I, I i truly feel like this young lady needs to talk to the person who has been raising her and let them know how she feels. And instead of asking people that don't have any interest in you, I think you really need to go to somebody who truly loves you and knows yeah. you, who's been mm -hmm. knowing you since you've been on this earth. Yeah. You know, like my mama used to say, I know you better than you know yourself. Yep. You know? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I really feel like she, she, she needs to, uh, and y'all, that was so true because she did know me. She said, I know what you're going to do before you even know what you're going to do. I'm like, I used yeah. to say when I was a kid, how did you know that lady? Because she is your creator. She is right. next, she's next to the creator. Mm -hmm. right. She's the, you know, she's the vessel that the creator used. Therefore, she is part uh, yeah. of your creation. Right. She knows and you. And I figured that out when you. I started having my own children. Right. I said, oh, okay. That's what right. they meant. I got it too. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, us moms and dads out here, we're doing God's work. I mean, we're, we're making humans, you know, just as we were made, they were made. And I mean, yeah, kids don't really understand how we, you know, we've been there. So we're telling you from a place of, you know, you don't, you shouldn't have to suffer because I've done it for you and, you know, take my advice. You know, you don't have to go through this. Uh, you know, I remember when I was, you know, that age, and I was tell, tell my mom, you know, she, you know, talking about sex, and she would be like, you don't need to talk about that. And I was like, mm, no, I think I do. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you don't need to talk about You ain't ready. I was like, mm, no, yeah. I think I am. <laughs> you know, um, so, you know, she might have a, a parent that's not approachable. And that's fine. If you mm -hmm. do have an parent that you're kind of afraid to talk to that's not approachable, then I would advise you to talk to like somebody at your school, um, a, re a, a real, counselor. you know, your yeah. teacher, a counselor, whomever, you know, because um, there there are teachers that there are there are teachers who still do care, you know, and, and you and you'll know that teacher. And if that's not the case, then if you have, you know, a church home, if you belong to a church, talk to somebody. See, that's why kids, they need to be involved and stuff. Because when they get to a point where they feel like they can't talk to their parents because they're afraid to talk to their parents, uh, because they don't want their parents to think of them as in a different way, they need yeah. that, you know, outside person that's um, unbiased to what's going on, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, and ch children really do need that. Um and that's why I encourage, you know, I encourage people that, you know, if you to put your kids in church, you know, and so therefore, if there is something going on, they can also always go to like the Sunday school teacher or the pastor, sister pastor, deacon, talk to somebody in the church about things that they're expressing or, you know, that they can't necessarily talk to their parents about because they're afraid of how their parents will feel or like my mom screaming, holler at me, you know, <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> my mother wasn't a talker. She was a yeller. She mm. yelled. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, mine too. Yeah. And I, mean, I, I am too. I, I'm a little bit. As my kids got older, I started talking to them more. But when they was mm -hmm. little, baby, they used to get the business. Okay. Well, it's, um, I think it's good for kids to have a healthy um, respect. Some people may say a little bit of fear. Um, and it's also good to really care what your parents think that also mm -hmm. translates to a little bit of like, oh, I, sh you know, that gut instinct of like, oh, I better not, I'm going to get in trouble because that keeps you out of trouble. Kids yeah. that have no fear, 
and are like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I got that. We all know how that turns out. I'm sorry. Like, you know what I mean? Like, whatever, whatever floats your boat, whatever is your family, that's fine. But I think that having that little bit of, I care what they think, I'm going to get in trouble, or just that healthy respect of mm -hmm. knowing that your parents have asked you not to do certain things, that keeps mm -hmm. you from not doing certain things and not getting into trouble and all of those things. So, I mean, the fact that she's 17, she's made it this far, she hasn't had sex yet, which, you know, it's not like super far, but she's getting there. She's getting to the home stretch of if you graduate from high school, you could make it through college and not have sex. And that, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Or you may get into college and you might have a boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever, and that may end up being your spouse. So, yeah. cool. you know, um, uh, you know, I, when people, say that they are with the person that they lost their virginity with. I have a lot of respect for people who are in that situation. I think that that's amazing that you met and were able to stay connected to this one person for life or you know, what is looking like to be your life. I think it's awesome. And far too often people are ready to just give it up to have an experience. And it's, it's, uh, it's selling yourself short. It's kind of like cutting the line or something, you know? It, it is. Exactly. You know, but, you know, we have to understand, that, you know, us moms in the chat that have, you know, our, you know, teenage kids, y'all, they, they, they got a lot of pressure. They dealing with a lot. Shoot, we as adults deal with a lot. So you can just imagine what these kids are dealing with, you know? So <clears throat> I, I encourage, because I did, I do that with my children when they were, you know, teenagers and stuff. I would go and talk to them, even now as adults. When you know, I, I whenever I see them, you know, I would say, "How you doing? You, what's going on? You all right? Everything all right?" You know, mm -hmm. I at that point it's your time to tell me. And I tried to make it to where my kids, I stayed open with my children, and they could talk to me. Um, you know, so we could have that type of relationship. I never wanted them to be afraid to say anything to me. Now, you just can't just say any old thing, okay? Cause, you know, but I just wanted them to be able to come to me when they had an issue or they were feeling some type of way about something. Okay, well, let's sit down and talk about it, you know? Like I said, my mother, she wasn't a talker. She was a yeller, you know? But I, in, when my kids were little, I was a yeller. But as they started getting older, I knew I had to start, like, calming down a little bit and really like not always that's what i said it's what i said and that's yeah. you know there's no explanation i started like reasoning with them like yeah. okay you know if i say no and they be like but mama why and then i'll say well why do you think i should let you do this like tell me what why i should do you know and i started you know going at them that way you know mm -hmm. and it, it, it worked for the most part then some days i'll just be like mm -mm, i said no and don't ask me again or i'm gonna hit you in your mouth mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. uh I was blessed. My daughter comes to me for everything. I was See, very blessed. blessed. It is. Yes, and you have a lot of kids that can't talk to their parents, you know, and this this young lady might be one of them. She probably can't talk to her parents, and that's unfortunate. Yeah. And she's feeling, having all those emotions, and she has yeah. to go to an advice column to seek advice. You know, I agree. Maybe that's, that's sad. Think, that's very I sad. think that our kids live in an environment that's way worse than the environment we grew up in. Cause we didn't have, you know, all this um, gen gender sensitivity stuff going on. We all knew what we were, and now, you know, with everything going on, they trying to make, you know, laws or rules where don't call me a he or don't call me a she, and that's okay. I just think that our kids today just don't really have a chance. Like, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it probably can be very confusing because I'll put it another way is just I think they've got two, they've got a lot of options, maybe right. too many options. And let's just say even so many options, it's hard to even wrap your head around everything. Mm -hmm. Because even for us as adults, it's hard to understand everything that is an option out here. Um, there's something I even had to look up a month ago because I, I actually had, I was talking to you about it, Tasha and I was just like, girl, I had to look that up. And you were like, what is it? The one mm -hmm. that, you know, that, that I'm not going to say what it is, but um, it was something that I was kind of like, what is that? Um, oh, a yeah. lot of options out here. 
Yeah. And, it's, yeah. It's, uh, and, you know, some stuff is not for kids, honestly. Right. And right. Um, you got to learn how to deal one on one with someone before you're going to deal with like many or all different kinds of, you know, you know, whatever. And, you know, I just, it's a lot. It's a lot. So I can't, uh, I'm not surprised that some kids are not sure. And maybe this per this kid doesn't even know, but yeah, it's a uh, it's an interesting time. But you know, yeah. it, it's uh, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. So real quick, I'm gonna read a couple um, comments from the chat room. Lawanda Johnson says, "Now that I um, have kids, I always tell them I'm here for them, and they can come talk to me about anything, so they can feel safe and better." And that he have me to listen and to teach them. Okay, that is great. Lawanda, that is awesome, girl. Like, we need more parents out there like that. Um, yeah. Okay, Lynn, so Tasha, read what I wrote. Okay, give me one minute, Lynn. I'm going to come back to you. Um, Lily B said, my mom was super strict with me. I would be scared to talk to her about certain things. I'm open to talk to my daughters about anything. Lily, my mother was the same way, too. So yeah. I, I feel you. I feel you on that one. And, and I'm glad that you are more open to your children because nowadays that's what kids need. They they need parents to be a little bit more um, open, you yeah. know, um, that's the, like Francois said, it's so much, it's so many options, so much stuff going on here that child, you, you your kids got to be able to come talk to you, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they, they don't want to be in a, you don't want your kids to have a, a scared relationship with you, like, right. you know, where they they can't talk or you can't relate or you're going to think some type of way about them, you know, and you got a lot of children that face that fear of living in a closet because they can't express themselves to their parents, you know. Mm -hmm. Don, Don. Um, Lynn says sex is overrated. I told my son's friend when your credit score is 700 and above, then we could talk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is that the comment you're talking about, Lynn? I'm sorry. <clears throat> All right, ladies. Um, we can take one more. Um, or um, well, you know what? Let's do this. Um, so y'all, really quick. As you know, you know we react a lot on the three moms here on YouTube. And um, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. It's it's always a lot to talk about when it comes to people, period. But I just felt, I feel more passionate, you know, addressing some of these issues because these are really real life issues. You know, these are right. people that really having some problems or just want to know something or need some advice or have a crazy situation going. You know, a lot of the stuff that we see on YouTube is, is, is embellished. You know, and we talk about it because we just like, what is that really going? Did you really put that out there in the atmosphere, child? Yeah, you, know, you know, we talk about it. But at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's truly for entertainment. Okay, y'all. But, you know, there, I would just say, you know, um, I just, I just, I thank everybody for coming to the chat tonight. I thank you all for that. I thank you ladies for hosting with me. I really, really appreciate it. Um, you know, Francois and I are doing something different. We're, we're going to try every week to bring, you know, new people on the platform. Um, just to give you guys a variety, because sometimes you want to hear several different opinions, several different mm -hmm. people's thoughts. Because you guys in the chat, like y'all are some really not y'all need some YouTube channels because y'all be coming with that straight knowledge, okay? Yeah, uh, I agree. And I, I enjoy seeing it, right, Reza? I enjoy seeing it, the the engagement and the communication and mm -hmm. your thoughts and your opinions on situations. And y'all, although we're speaking about the ask Herbie advice, but there could be potentially somebody in the chat room with this similar situation. You never know. Okay. So yeah. my theory is each one teach one. Okay. Oh, good one. Yeah. Yeah. Most definitely. So you guys, um, do y'all want to do another one or? Sure. All right. So let me, um, let me go get it real quick. All right, so this one, all right, so this one, this one is she, she not gonna need a whole bunch of help, okay? <laughs> um, 
Uh, yeah, she. This easy. I, I, I can. Yeah, I can answer this with my eyes closed. Um, it's from Beetle Man Juice Two. It says, "Help." Hmm. Okay, so I have a relationship that I've been in for two plus years, and recently learned that the person I'm with doesn't like kissing really. The thing is, I love kissing. And I'm very affectionate person. What do I do? Ooh. You need to get you a new boot thing, Chad. Because if he don't want to kiss you, Joe, Chad, do you got halitosis? Like, what is going on? Because if y'all <laughs> been way, Risa fell out. Risa. <laughs> I was like, wait, did Risa just what she didn't look like she just went dead? That made me well out. Girl, I'm just trying to figure out. Okay, so for two years, y'all been together and recently learned that the person I'm with doesn't like kissing. So what you mean, Risa? What y'all been doing for the first uh 23 months? What was y'all doing? 23 months. Well, she said they've been getting for two years. But she said recently. So what? So what? So this month? So twenty three months ago? What was y'all doing? If y'all wasn't kissing, like, um, you very affectionate and you love kissing. Well, baby, if he don't want to kiss you back, then you. I mean, that's kissing is a, a big part of um intimacy. <laughs> you know oh, what I'm wow, saying? Boy. So, um. There's there's some issues there, boo. I don't know why he don't want to kiss you. Only you know that. Well, really, yeah. only he know that. So you need to figure out a way for him to tell you why he don't want to kiss you. Okay. I mean, go to the dentist. And I'm not trying to be funny. I mean that in all due respect. Go to the dentist. Have your cleaning. Make sure you don't have a cavity because sometimes cavities give off a smell. Um, make sure, Reza, I'm sorry, I'm just saying, like, let's check our hygiene. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, let's, let's be good stewards of our bodies and make sure we are clean. We are smelling good. Our teeth are good. We don't have stomach problems. There's not, like you said, Tasha, halitosis. There's not some kind of creep in the, in your tummy, in your gut. You know, you could have, you know, stomach, people have stomach infections. Um, what do you call that? Um, uh, you know, like, things are good. I'm just saying, like, you could have smells coming up into your throat. Get it? Make sure you are good. And then, you know, yeah, have a conversation. What's up? You could just fall out. Diagnosis. <laughs> Yeah, it's that it's that stomach infection called H. pylori. That's when you get your breath stinks. It's like a it's a. It's a oh, you know. oh my god, that girl. So, um, yeah, but uh, it ain't right. Different. Yeah, it, something's not right. Something's right. It could be right. sour belly. It, it's something. <laughs> <laughs> Reason reminds me of like when you're like in English class and you pass like the funny note or something's funny and Reason gets the whole class like in detention to see she just, she just falls all the way out. Reason because Reason can't hold it. Um, you I'm you telling know, you, Teresa, you the loudest. What you can't, you can't hold it. Oh, <laughs> oh boy, okay. All right, y'all. So look, let's do one more. So this one is this one is this oh. one's simple. Okay, it's 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 not harmless. Oh, uh, back to sis, sis. Um, go to the dentist. Okay, and, mm -hmm. and see what's going on there, and then or just ask your boo thing, baby. Why you don't want to kiss me? Like, we've been together two right. years, and in the last two weeks, you don't want to kiss me. Like, what's what, he might be kissing somebody else, he might not like you no more, boo. I don't know. Okay, Wait, All right. Tasha, can you look up Nikki Luke? Nikki Luke had a question. Oh, you see it? Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, oh, here it is. Yeah, you got uh, it. She said, 
I've been with my boyfriend for years now, and he isn't sure if he wants to get married one day or not. I really want to get married one day. Should I wait for him to forgive, to figure things out? Okay. So, Nikki, you said, I've been with my boyfriend for years now. And he isn't sure. Now, when you say years, baby, are we talking five or more years? Or what are we talking? And he still doesn't know if he wants to get... Do you, do you guys have children? I need to know that. Do you, uh, we need to know if you have children. Two years. Two years. Okay. Y'all been together two years. Um, do they have children, children? Do they live together? Oh, okay, Nikki. Oh, good. Okay. Oh, two years? No, we don't have any children. Okay, that's okay. Okay, no children? Okay. Can I ask a question? Nikki, do you want to have children and are you getting to be an age where that could be a factor? No, they don't live together. Yeah, Nikki, that's, you know, I'm going to be honest it's with you, baby. If, 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 I don't know if I agree. 23. Okay, you got time. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, baby. I, I would... I mean, I would just, you don't want to rush a marriage, right? If right. if he thinks right now that he's not ready to be married, then baby, you don't need to rush it because you would want him to be a willing participant, okay? Mm -hmm. You don't want him to marry you just because he doesn't want to lose you, but he really not ready. And if he's not ready, Nikki, you might want to ask him, mm -hmm. why are you not ready? Like, what's your hesitation? You, you need to have a real conversation with him about it. And baby, don't get upset. Just... You know, you take the information, you know, um, just take take it as as valuable information, you know, mm -hmm. and whatever is the reluctance, maybe y'all can work on whatever that hesitation, reluctance or whatever that is. But I wouldn't just throw in the towel yet, especially if you truly do love him. And then you got to understand, baby, you can't get that time back. So, and you he, know, and he just said he wasn't he sure he didn't say no. Right. He said, but then when he said he wasn't sure, what you mean you're not sure? Like, I'm going to need yeah. you to elaborate yeah. on that. What you well, mean you, mm -hmm. you're not sure if I'm the one or you're not sure if you want to even be married, period? Like, I'm going to need you to elaborate on that. Well, what you mean? But, Tasha, um, so Nikki, one thing I would just say also, make sure, make sure what you think you want is what you really want because. Mm -hmm. Make you know you're 23. I don't know how old he is, and I'm not trying to diminish your love or diminish your relationship, but make sure that you are just because this guy's your boyfriend for two years doesn't make him like a great future husband. Some people are great boyfriends, some people who are great boyfriends end up being lousy husbands, or you know, what I mean? so just be careful that this man is going to grow into being an awesome husband and that he's got qualities that you want in a husband, like someone who is going to make decisions, someone who is going to want to claim you, somebody who is going to want to provide and protect and profess, right? Those are the qualities that we want in a man. If he doesn't know if he even wants to be married, much less married to you, um, if you love him, continue to date him. There's nothing wrong with that. But once you start to feel in your heart that you could be wasting your time, let him go. Or let your give yourself permission to let yourself go, to go and pursue the things in your life you want. Don't settle just because somebody decides that they have a particular lifestyle that they want to pursue. If you yeah. have a lifestyle you want, you go after it and go get it. Don't compromise because when you start here, it's going to be a lifetime of compromising and doing and getting less than what you actually really want. It, it starts a cycle. So, you know, 
I mean, but also too, Prince, while even though she's 23 and everything you said is spot on, but I would also, you know, um, let's just say he's the same age as her. Let's say he's 25. Okay. But when she, when the, his hesitation, like I would want to know what his hesitation is like, let's talk about it. You know, I'm not saying that you're trying to convince him, but you just, I mean, y'all been together long enough to where y'all should have conversations like that. You know, yeah, he should be able to tell you what his hesitation, what his hesitation. It might not necessarily be anything about you. He might not, like you said, friends, why he might not feel like he can make a good husband. Maybe he needs to mature more, more. Maybe he wants yeah. to live a little more. Maybe he enjoys just dating her, but he yeah. hasn't lived enough or dated enough to say he necessarily wants this to be his wife. You know, yeah. um, I mean, and. I'm not saying he's he thinks he's not going to be a good husband or he won't be a good husband, but what's a good husband for me may not be a good husband for you, Tasha. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, just because you date someone for two years doesn't automatically make him your future husband material. I think oftentimes right. women think, mm -hmm. OK, I've attached myself to this man. I'm giving him sex. We maybe are going out to dinner. I give him all of my time. Next progression is he's got to be my husband. Um, no, he doesn't. Um, especially if he's saying, if he's articulating, I don't know if I want to be married. Sometimes men don't know that they want to be married till they're almost 30 years old. True. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if she feels a desire to want to be married, that might not be your guy. But I wouldn't just cut things off tomorrow. You might yeah. just watch him some more. Don't even, I mean, I don't know. My advice, if I were auntie or whatever, I would say watch him. See his mannerism. Is he operating like a man who you see is moving in the way of a man who may be getting married, you know, or is he yeah. just kind of happy being a boyfriend? Um, well, I think up a little more together yeah. you know, um, especially if we just consider that they're they're both in you know similar ages yeah um, 23 is young there are a lot of people who have who have gotten married at that age and been mm -hmm. together 50 years you yeah. know mm -hmm. um, it's it, age is what it is but it's your maturity level you yeah. know you could be 40 and acting like you 17 mm -hmm. so the, the the age is just a number it's the maturity level yeah. Of that person age. I agree and with I, maybe, And we do know that women tend to mature faster than men. And mm -hmm. maybe he doesn't have he he's not at the maturity level that you are at 23. I would do yeah. like what Francois said, baby. Just just watch him. I would I wouldn't say dump him, just but just watch him and guard your heart at all costs. Yeah, okay? I, I I don't mean like watch him like a detective, but just see how he treats you. See, see, does he treat you? Um, does he put you over and above? Um, you know, like, uh, it's hard to explain. And maybe talk to your mom, talk to some women that you know who are married, even if you've got girlfriends who've already gotten married. Um, talk to them about qualities, and it doesn't have to be qualities that you have to mirror, but just start to understand a little you know the difference between a husband and a wife i mean it just it's it's the, i mean a husband and a um a boyfriend because there's a difference um you know uh and you know what tasha to your point if she pushes him on like is it married ever or is it married me um yeah, you might push him away. You might scare him away. But again, you know what? If he's really going to be taking up knows. time, using up your resources, your body, um, all of those things, and he doesn't intend to ever marry you, because oftentimes men know this, girl, yeah. cut the cord if, if that's what it is, because you don't need to waste all your goodies on someone who is not considering you in the future. Because someone said that, is he talking about, does he ever mention you in the future? And yes, that's also something, a dialogue to listen for, because if you're not, if he's not picturing you in that house he wants to build or that ranch he wants to buy or um, whatever, uh, or let's get an apartment, then you're probably not really at the forefront of his future. I mean, did you all like see Legally Blonde, you know, that movie where he dated, he dated Reese Witherspoon until he moved on to the next woman who was going to take him off to the next phase. I mean, there's 
tons of movies like that where men just kind of like, not all men, but just be careful. Just be careful. Yeah. Um, Charlie, um, Charlie doubles, double oh seven says I got married at 18 and was clueless as of my husband's reasoning for doing so was he didn't want me to date while he was deployed and I was in love. So I just said, yes. And what happened? So, are, are Charlie, are you guys still married? Are you still together? Charlie's so pretty. Isn't she? Yes, she is. She is. She's so pretty. Lynn says women want the fantasy. I think you have to be realistic first. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, Nikki says, um, I hope I hope we didn't bombard you, Nikki, but she says, thanks, everyone, for all the good advice. I was starting to freak out, LOL. I'm definitely going to take a step back and watch. I also asked him about his hesitations. I really appreciate the advice. Okay, Nikki, we appreciate you. And, y'all, we're going we gonna to let Nikki be the end of it, okay? Uh, we're going to go out here. Nikki, you got this. Nikki, make sure you come back and let us know, you know, how you're doing and how everything is going. Okay. Make sure you join us the next time. I thank each and every one of you guys in the chat for coming on today. I thank for I thank all the passerbys. Um, I don't know if you've hit the like bucket button or not, but please do so. Also, y'all, please make sure you subscribe to Reza's channel. Please make sure you subscribe to Francois Vlogs channel. She has two Francois Vlogs. Love lies and lace fronts, y'all. I enjoyed you ladies so much. Thank you so so much yes, for coming so on. Much fun. It was I enjoyed it. It was all right, was you guys. Until the next time, we will see y'all in the next video. Remember, you guys. Bye bye, bye, -bye. ladies. Bye.